Jason Matthew uh, Edmondson was born in Erie, PA, and raised in San Diego, California. Jason was son of David Pratt and of Nancy Pratt. He worked for 25 years in emergency services and safety in Alaska, retiring as deputy chief in 2019. A year and a half as a lead instructor here with the Tennessee Fire and Codes Academy, and then two, year, two years here as district fire captain for Williamson Fire and Rescue. Jason would always say he loved continuing to teach members within Williamson County and see them succeed and get hired in all areas over the country. The impact he made on the fire service in Tennessee, Williamson County, and Nolensville will be hard to ever recreate. He was so proud of the few that he mentored closely and how they were growing into awesome men, women, and firefighters. Childhood flu, an adult we become. There are angels among us because God sent us one. Follow your dreams, spread your wings, leave the nest. He did it, achieved it, and gave nothing but his best. With pride, my heart swelled. He was brave, strong, true blue, amazing, compassionate, giving, a man who put God, his family, and friends first in his heart. Jason was a person that was more than just a great friend, however. He kept me, that kept me entertained and laughing. He was a family guy through and through. He loved his wife and his kids unconditionally. And trust me, he talked about them often. He was one of the most determined individuals that you could ever meet. And telling him he couldn't do something or know would only drive him harder. I was witness to this on so many occasions when it came to him both professionally and personally. Jason has taught me through this experience to live free, make memories as you can, and never take a day for granted. I was blessed to be part of his life. I'm thankful that the Lord made our paths cross. Eleven forty-five, Captain Jason Edmondson, Econ. Eleven forty-five, Captain Jason Edmondson, Econ. Eleven forty-five, Captain Jason Edmondson, Econ. Having heard no response, we acknowledge the passing of Captain Jason Edmondson, who has answered his final call. Captain Jason Edmondson served as a district fire captain with Williamson County since 2020. He served the fire service for over 28 years and was highly regarded in the community, he says. Captain Edmondson, thank you for your dedication, service, and expertise. You are a mentor to many and a friend to all. To Captain Edmondson's family, thank you for your sacrifice and your support to the service of the community. Rest in peace, Captain Edmondson. We've got it from here. Econ is clear. 1529. Jason stood on this stage approximately three years and four months ago. At that time, he was officially welcoming into the fire service the first two recruit classes that he'd had at the academy, 1903 and 1904. It was that day that he shook hands with many who were seated in this room today as they crossed the stage into their new careers, graduating firefighters whom Jason helped to mold and instruct with the help of his fellow instructors, most of whom are in this room also. Many of you became his close friends in a new state that was new to our family in a role that was new to him. He thrived down here. And I think it's quite apparent he left his mark. Because so many of you have reached out, stepped up to take care of and do what you can for Jason's family. And today, his family, sitting in the front row with us, and I thank you from the deepest places of our heart. I look around this room and I see all of your faces, a room full of persons with different backgrounds, different beliefs, different walks of life. There are others who aren't able to be here physically and they're hopefully being able to watch this. Whatever the case may be, as Casey brought it forth, he is the common thread. Jason had a way of touching people's lives for the better, and we're all here today to show honor and tribute to a man who set such a fine example of love for God, love for his wife, love for his family, children, and friends. And he brought us all together to celebrate and honor him today. And he would be so very honored. 
Jason and I were really good at sharing memes and gifts and TikToks and everything else. If it struck a chord with us, we were bound to share it with the other person. He was always good at finding and sending all those silly and romantic ones, but I was rarely on social media, so I had some catching up to do. A few short months before we lost Jason, I shared something with him that spoke volumes to me. Grady Pollard wrote this about the measure of a man. The measure of a man is not determined by his show of outward strength or the volume of his voice or the thunder of his actions or of his intellect or academic abilities. It is seen rather in terms of the love that he has for his family and for everyone, the strength of his commitments, the genuineness of his friendships, the sincerity of his purpose, the quiet courage of his convictions, the fun, laughter, joy, and happiness he gives to his family and to others, his love of life, his patience, and his honesty, and his contentment with what he has. Most of you sitting in this room knew Jason through the fire service. Some knew him as a friend, a brother, a son, and a father. I knew and saw him through a different lens. I knew him as a man he was constantly striving to be on a daily basis. I saw the loving dad he tried so hard to be to his kids. I knew him as my soulmate, best friend, confidant, my lover, my rock, my everything, my person. I knew him as the loving, adoring, supportive, and protective husband I was blessed to have for too short a time. Jason was a man who loved serving the communities that he had the privilege to serve in. He loved teaching and strived to be the best mentor and leader that he could be to those around him. He was a man known for his strength of character, service to others, a man known to stop when he saw someone on the side of the road with a flat tire because he would want somebody to do the same thing for somebody he loved. And to these people that he helped, he was probably a hero. Jason genuinely cared for others. He loved when others didn't love him back. He gave when others only took. He led and protected others who, when others didn't care enough to. He was known for his wicked sense of humor and always tried to lighten the mood with a joke or two. We're all here despite our various beliefs and backgrounds because this man touched so many lives that we couldn't help but love him for the person he was and the person he is in our hearts. He left behind a legacy that will not be duplicated. There's so much more to him than the career firefighter, more than just his service to others. Jason loved a good cigar with a friend on the back porch by the fire. He loved sitting somewhere to watch and listen to thunderstorms. We did that all the time. He loved history, going for drives, exploring, finding the next adventure together. He loved traveling. He loved trying out new recipes, smoking things on his grill, which I have now to learn how to use. I can't tell you how many TikToks I have of recipes for smoked meat or something that he wanted to try out. He loved having music night where we would play random songs and sing and dance the hours away in our living room. He was the husband who found heart-shaped rocks just about anywhere and would bring them home to me. He was a wonderful and thoughtful husband who would leave a light on for me in a room because he knew I didn't like walking into a dark room, mostly because I'm clumsy. He would take pictures of what he did throughout the day and send me texts because he loved to include me in his day or whatever he was doing, and he told me that at least I knew he was thinking about me. It was these kinds of things that he did that I already miss so much. Some people share their whole lives looking for their person. When I met Jason six years ago, I just knew I could stop looking. We always said our, loves, our story was a love story in the making. If you haven't heard it yet, get together with me at some point because it's a modern day fairy tale. It's been an honor to be his person and his wife. It's been a privilege to be married to such a well-loved and honorable man. He chose me to spend his life with. He chose me every day, and I was so blessed, grateful, and honored for that, and I chose him right back. He chose to be the dad to my daughter. She needed one, and he was there. He was her confidant and mentor. He loved her unconditionally and just as much as if she were his own blood. He loved all of his children so very much, and he worked hard to provide for them and did whatever he could to make sure that they had a good life. I've known loss. We all have, in some manner, known great loss. But as I've gone through this process, there's been so many 
moments when I've caught myself in the surrealism of the situation. Things like, I can't possibly believe I'm going through this today. Who would have thought that you, we would all be sitting here? I thought many times that it's got to be somebody else's life because this is surely not mine as we've been going through this process. We still have a lifetime of memories to make photos to take, drives and places to explore, plans and goals to meet. In fact, we just talked about them some the other day. He was my beloved constant, and the loss of that constant is a torturous thing to the heart and soul. However, through all of this, it's given me clarity. We are all made to love and to be loved. When we are blessed with love, when we are loved by another so completely, when they see us, even when we don't see ourselves, we have to hold on and cherish that love, cultivate it, protect it. Even when we're afraid to risk loving and being vulnerable to love, we have to take the risk. So if you have love in your life, if you have a person or persons, because kids count too, love them as strongly as you can, hold them tight, be in the present with them as much as you can so that you have the memories to keep alive, communicate with each other. This is the key to lasting love and for any relationship. Let little things go and focus on the things that matter the most. Remember the example that Jason set every day and strive to live up to that because we don't know the time that we have with our loved ones. To Jason. You and I are going to have a long chat someday, Edmison. Wherever you are, I hope you have a long stretch of road to go wee-woo, wee-woo as fast and as often as you can. I hope you're still yelling at your fellow brothers as they respond to calls to go get them, brothers. I hope you know how loved you are. I hope we can continue to make you proud. And I hope that you know that as hard as it will be, we'll continue to live life so that you can live and experience things through our eyes. Rest easy, my king, my love. Your people have it from here. experience and knowledge that Jason brought here from Middle Tennessee from Alaska was second to none. <clears throat> Jason's career was about helping the public. His 25 years in Alaska as a full-time career firefighter where he retired as a deputy chief, then becoming the lead instructor at <clears throat> TFAC and Fire Codes, and then moving on to Williamson County EMA in the fire branch as district fire captain 1145. Jason has a profound impact in the fire service and in the lives of hundreds and hundreds of firefighters. Jason was, all he wanted to do was just help people. Captain Jason Edmondson was a loving husband, father, my best friend, and one hell of a firefighter. Who knows how many lives will be saved because of Jason's impact on his students and his fellow firefighters. But today's about not so much mourning, but it's about a celebration for Jason Edmondson's life. So if you would indulge me, can I get everybody to stand and let's applaud and celebrate the life of Jason Edmondson. One of the quotes he dedicated to his fire service, to this fire service loss was, we must embrace the pain and burn it as fuel for our journey. And Jason did that and kept pressing forward every day. I feel that in this instant, it's, he would want me to relay to you a quote from Haruki Murakami that people die all the time. Life is more fragile than we think. So you should treat each other in a way that leaves no regrets, fairly and if possibly sincerely. It's too easy not to make the effort then weep and wring your hands after the person dies. So if that's Jason's last instruction to you, embrace the pain, use it as fire, use it as fuel, treat people fairly and sincerely and make the effort. I know we'll never have another Jason, and I'm not sure the world could handle another one. You know, the guy who would ask, ask who you would ask to take pictures of something and later find out that he fills your phone with selfies and only one picture that you actually really wanted him to take. Or the guy that would literally sit out in the parking lot, like Casey said, and try to find just the right tone on his truck to get the citizens to pull over. Jason, you will forever be my best friend, and I hope I can be 10% of the firefighter that you were.
So, just want to let you know, Jason was a big impact on me. Um, as you know, he was always there uh, for other people and put himself second. So every day when we worked on the trucks for, I think it was eight weeks straight, we were together. Um, he stopped every day to get me an unsweet tea from Chick-fil-A and also uh, we did lunch and everything. And then another big thing, I'll still do it for the rest of my career in the, at, at work is um, during hose testing, we went at two o'clock every day to get Slurpees. And it was like his thing to get it mixed and everything. So just know that I'll always have a Slurpee. I'm gonna buy two to, and always have one there for him. Jason Edmonds. I met him when he first started down at the fire academy. Realized he seemed like he had his act together. Got lots of information from him. Uh, after lots of conversations, um, when I found out we were hiring another fire captain, I made sure to get him information and he applied, got it, and I discovered he was way funnier than I'd ever possibly thought he was. Uh, quick on the wit, couldn't, you know, always had a witty comeback, knew what he wanted to say, knew how he wanted to say it, and that was just verbally. With a meme, he was just an absolute terror. One funny story when I think of Jason, probably at the time it was funny, but now it, it means a lot to me looking back. Two winters ago, it was his first winter when he had come to Nolansville, and it was <clears throat> just me and him, um, a couple inches of ice and snow on the ground, and we were running all day long in our brush truck. I think we were on our eighth call, and finally he pulls into the twice daily in Nolansville, I'm getting gas and goes, all right, stay here. Don't leave the truck. I'll be back in just a minute. And 30 seconds later, he comes out with two fudge pies and two chocolate milks. And he just hands them to me. He goes, this is what winners drink. And this is what winners eat. And I thought it was hilarious at the time. I mean, I, you know, I thought maybe he was, you know, being like a hot dog or like a real meal or, or something. Cause we had been gone for five, six hours. And he comes out with two chocolate milks and two fudge pies. And I don't know, I just, I thought it was the funniest thing. And now every time we run a big call or something, I go to twice daily and I get a chocolate milk and a fudge pie. And every time I think of Jason. I always cherish that fire we ran at the rec center in uh, Nolensville when it made you go down that sidewalk and the kids were screaming at the fans. Uh, and then I turn around and you're ladder in the building. And uh, I looked at you and said, what, what are you doing ladder in the building for? And he said, I told all my recruits, got to ladder every building that we go to. So here you were literally laddering a, a porta potty. Um, but it was funny. And man, just know that we're going to take care of your family, and take care of all your brothers and sisters. And we got it from here, man. And uh, just know I love you and I'm going to miss you. So one thing that Jason really taught me, especially with me being 11 and 18 and him being there all the time, is no matter how outstrung or unachievable a certain goal might be to always shoot for it, especially with my dream was being at Franklin Fire and he was always pushing me to get out and do something, to train, to take classes. And with that being said, him, him really helping me push behind me made the difference I think between me getting that job and me not getting that job um, and just another big thing he was always a big supporter he never doubted anybody if you put your mind to it he was right behind you pushing you along the way remember Jesus loves us even when our circumstances tempt to tell us that that's not true Jesus loves us he's for us he hasn't forget forgotten us but he's always working for us so we can add hope to our grief, knowing that we know where the believer is in heaven. We can accept the peace that God offers, knowing that God's still working. We can let the joy of our Savior and Lord shine through. Remember, death is an intruder, not the victor. It's not goodbye. Let's see you again soon.